Okay, in this video we're going to look at a cross-cut section of the spinal cord and just to orient you, you're looking at a fifth cervical vertebrae which you can identify by the split spinous process and also the fact that there are transverse foramina only seen in the cervical vertebrae. This is where the vertebral arteries run. Here we're going to see layers known as the meninges. These are the fibrous coatings that cover the spinal cord and they are continuous with the brain. This right here is a ligament. It is not one of the meningeal layers. But this adipose tissue you see here represents the epidural space. Again, just make note that you have an epidural space in your spinal cord. You do not have an epidural space in the cranial cavity. This first tissue layer we come to is the outermost meningeal layer called the dura mater. This very fine line just below the dura mater is the subdural space. After that we have another fine white layer or gray layer called the arachnoid mater and beyond that this very cavernous area called the subarachnoid space. This is where you'll also find cerebral spinal fluid. The very next tissue layer is the pia mater, the softest of the three meningeal layers and it's intimately adhered to the white matter of the spinal cord and in the brain intimately adhered to the cerebral cortex. This structure here is known as your posterior median sulcus. This would be your anterior median fissure. Fissures are deeper and heavier. This butterfly shaped structure is gray matter. It's unmyelinated. The white matter is myelinated, which is an insulative tissue that helps neuron structures. This connection right here is the gray commissure with this hole in the middle called the central canal, again filled with cerebral spinal fluid. There are roots associated with the spinal cord. This, on the posterior side of this vertebrae, is the posterior or dorsal root coming in. This is your dorsal root ganglion. This ventral root coming out has no ganglion associated with it. So dorsal roots carry sensory information in, ventral roots carry motor information out. You can see these structures represented on both sides the human body has bilateral symmetry for most of its structures. You can see the meningeal layers then cover the dorsal roots, ventral roots, the dorsal root ganglion, and when we get right here we have mixed nerves. They're carrying both sensory and motor information. So this is a mixed or spinal nerve. This will then divide into a dorsal and ventral ramus, which allows innervation to and from the posterior of your body and to and from the anterior of your body. Finally, on either side of this, you'll find a sympathetic ganglion. You have a chain of these running down both sides of the vertebral column that represent a significant portion or division of your autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic.